Hey, welcome to Market Buzz. I am Greg Schnell, the Canadian technician and host of the Market Buzz. Each show, we do a deep dive into different industries using weekly charts to see what is happening on a long timeline. Please follow me on Twitter at Schnell Investor, and you can also find my blogs on gregschnell.com as well as stockcharts.com. So uh, today we're going to get into really long-term charts. Uh, you'll see that in a little bit, but um, this bull market is really working hard to try and get a, a direction. So we're going to we're, we're fighting hard here. So are we going to drive by the lows or do they hold? And again, we might just go past them and come back up. We might stop near them. We might, today might be the low. Um, we're watching really closely. This is an extremely sensitive part of the market right here. And so we're testing the lows. Bonds are worrying. I mean, they're bombing out, but I would, one of the things I would say about the bonds, it almost seems like they've moved so fast now that we're near the washout low for a while. Doesn't mean forever, just for a while. Um, so I think if you start watching a chart like TBT or TLT for some reversals, um, that might be more important. Um, we're gonna look at the bank charts today because they're somewhat worrisome. And then the long-term charts, I'm, I wanna focus on the long-term charts uh, first of all. So when we, and again, not to uh, scare anybody, but just to kind of make sure everybody's aware of the current tension in the setups in all the charts. So this is part of the Stock Charts website called the Historic Chart Gallery of Market Indexes. What you can do is over here on this Charts and Tools, you can go in here and you scroll down on the right-hand side and there's a Historical Chart Gallery here. And that's available for anybody. Um, but the, the point I want to make on this is that um, this is the picture from uh, for the Dow going all the way back to the year 1900. And, and I'm going to try and experiment with new tools today. I'm going to try and annotate right onto the charts um, with this historical chart gallery. You can't use the, uh, the stock charts annotation tool. It's just, these are just fixed pictures. So one of the things that, um, you know, is somewhat concerning, so we had the, the thrust into the 2000 top, and we had the thrust into the 1999 top. Um, both of those were, were uh, important ends of the decade, so 1929 heading into 1930, 1999 heading into 2000. Um, here we sit on this thrust with the... Uh, what's the best way to say it, with a potential market uh, top at, at um, the year two, 2020. We also have the um, Dow getting up around this 28.5 level, pretty high. But I think more importantly, the big thing to notice on this chart is of all the major thrusts up, and this one would probably be included, um, of all the major thrusts up, three of them let's call it four out of five, have broken quite suddenly. And I mean, this 1960 period here was pretty rough. The 2000 to 2009 period was pretty rough. But we definitely are in some sort of a ballistic market phase um, that we haven't seen much of before. So when we look at this uh, setup, I would just say the markets are really tense here and we're right on this trend line now and we'll we'll see that in a little bit. Here's the transports. And one of the things to notice on the transports, so I'm gonna just keep trying to use this annotation tool. It's um, new for me. Uh, so one thing that I notice on this transportation uh, chart is, you know, we've broken down and obviously the airlines are struggling here. Um, so that's one part of it. But in all these cases, when the transports broke, they were also a pretty good clue. And, and the big issue, I think, is that the transports have already broken and they look more worrisome. So when we're, I guess there's this one too, but when we're looking at these big trends, we want to be careful. Like I could have drawn a trend line, obviously, in here. And when we, when we look at those... Um, when we look at those trend lines, the big issue we've got is, you know, is it going to just be a short-term blip like this or, or, you know, is there a bigger perspective? 
the bonds are telling us it's not just the coronavirus. That's the real problem because these long-term money managers are moving. Uh, again, the bond market is way bigger than the equity market. And, and the bond managers um, are making massive moves here. There's trillions of dollars um, in bonds and, and they're trying to figure out how to how to manage through that. So I would just say the bond markets are giving us a signal. This transports clearly on this 100-year chart. That's a pretty clear signal up in the top right-hand corner. When I'm in annotation mode, I can't zoom in here. So um, anyway, I think that's a, that's a problem for us that this transport's already broken the big long-term uptrend. Now, the Dow Jones utility average, this is... Uh, this, uh, the utilities were down more than energy sector today, which shocked me um, because obviously there was no agreement yet in in uh, OPEC. And so that that chart's been, or that group is really under pressure today. I think oil was down 5% when I looked uh, just before the show. So we're one of the things to keep watching for is how do all of these major um, issues play out? And obviously, this is the end of 1929 for the utility sector. In the downturn, the utility sector were not a place to hide. And again, we have had a utility sector that has been, I don't want to say euphoric, but in the search of yield, everybody has migrated into the utility sector. So just remember that the utility sector, when when everything's falling, the utility sector will not hold up. They might hold up better. Um, but, you know, relative losing isn't a great way to invest. So we want to make sure that we're not just invested in something because it goes down less than something else. Um, anyway, when we look at these big long-term uptrends, we're nowhere near a long-term uptrend on this chart. But I would just say we do have these big shards that look relatively rare um, hanging out on the uh, utilities chart. And again, it's the search for yield. So with that, try and um, stay ballast, uh, stay uh, neutral on, on utilities and make sure that you don't get swept into there just trying to preserve capital and finding out it didn't work. Okay, so here's the S&P 500. And on this particular chart, I'm in a whole area of life. I'm less comfortable here because I'm normally using the other annotation tool. It's amazing how I feel like, uh, how different it is. So with with this chart, I think it's pretty clear to say we're testing that trend line today with, uh, with the S&P 500. Again, these are monthly charts. But when we look at all of these big trends, when they end, they're worth noting. And I guess the question is, do you draw that here or here? But either way, you probably wanted to miss that. Um, I would say we had a similar reaction in 2018, where we had the big uptrend. We dropped below what I would consider where the trend line should be drawn and then jumped back up. And now we're coming back to test that trend line today. And then we have this position back here in the 1929, obviously in a big pullback and then a rally back and then down she went. We're in this particular zone where we're trying to hold this rally and again if you hold the rally and rally out of here you know everything is fine and that's exactly what we'd obviously all like the one thing i want to say is with the transports breaking the industrials are trying to hold and um, the s p is trying to hold it's not clear whether or not that will work out so when we get these big major trends i would just say that we are in one of the biggest single uh, structural bull markets that we've had, but we're under a lot of pressure in the rest of the world. And again, um, I've mentioned it many, many times about how the rest of the world has different problems than the US, but the US S&P 500 sells to the rest of the world. So um, it doesn't mean that their problems don't become our problems. Okay, so the New York Composite, this one's already broken the trend line um, on this big picture. get that tool and so uh, you know if I drew it like that that's a pretty I guess that's the last hope trend line and then we also have a trend line that goes more like this and and this one would show let's just uh, select this trend line 
and just take it out of there. So this one here, the one thing that I would say on this trend line, uh, let me grab it. Um, the one thing I would say on this trend line is the 2018 dip below was pretty important. Now we're trying to hold again here with the same sort of thing, but it, remember the transports have already broken. So with that big picture view, that's something important to watch for. Now, I'm gonna go back and just draw this on some other time frames here. Um, this is the New York composite. When we get these big rallies and they break, they're pretty important places for us on the chart. And so uh, the fact that we, whatever, went steep like that, and perhaps uh, you could mark it like that. Remember, it took a long time for the, for the top to roll over in the major indexes, uh, um, like the New York Composite during the tech boom, because uh, the tech stocks just kept going higher and higher and higher, but the rest of the market was not. Anyway, what we see here, um, clearly when these big trends start to break, they're worth noting. The only thing I would say at this point, with the transports already broken, it is something to be more um, suspicious of. Okay. Again, just working through these long-term charts. Now, here's the NASDAQ composite. This was just an unbelievable wild ride. I wasn't really um, aware of, of what was going on at the time. Uh, but when we look at this tech run right now, uh, one of the things I, I keep hearing, you know, well, Greg, nothing's in a bubble. And I'm going, well, that software is a service sector. Um, you know, we, we got a lot of people that think that's just normal. And I would just say it seems very um, steeply priced for me. So that, that would be one group that I would say is suspicious. And again, everybody plotting that to go to the moon forever because um, you'll get that subscription monthly revenue. This was the slope of the 2000 top. You can imagine how different that was. And then look at how quick it knifed away. Um, so one thing about the NASDAQ, it's a real trading world. Uh, on the way up here, these are big moves back. But here we sit on this nice trend line and we're trying to hold it on the NASDAQ as well. So try to make sure that you don't get caught up in uh, just listening to the news. Try to at least use something to help you because what we really care about is we have to sell our stocks to somebody else. And if nobody else wants to buy them, then we're probably going to find out that we're, um, we're going to carry them a lot lower than we wanted to. Okay, um, commodities. This is a great one. Uh, let's talk about gold here. So on gold, when we annotate this particular chart, gold is full of froth and then falls apart. Um, I should fix that line, I will in just a second. We had a nice run in gold here. And I remember um, trying to figure out if gold was, was in a final high position right up here. big euphoric runs before and then we had a big giant downtrend oh, that's not going to work so with this uh euphoric run um this downtrend was was pretty evident so everybody is saying that this here is the new next bull market and i hear it i would just say look at this cup right here and look at the cup right here and just be very careful that we're not right here. And again, this was when inflation topped, maybe when interest rates bottom, we see the opposite or we're just starting the expansion, I don't know. But I would say gold is trying to take um, a run at the highs, but for some reason the gold stocks are, are much less uh, comfortable with the move and I don't have any particular feel for that. So anyway, um, just if you're a gold bull, uh, make sure you're, you're um, watching yourself now here's silver and notice how it doesn't have that same shape so again we go up here gold roaring but silver not so much so silver has a downtrend line here i would say if that started to break that would be a better place to enter but we don't seem to have that yet we also have this trend line up across the 
the bottom that got broke and came down now we would just draw that flatter or at least horizontal support around fourteen dollars both of those are pretty big issues and so try to uh, watch um, just to make sure that the price action follows through here i will say that gold in 2008 it's important to watch what happened here here was 2008 and gold actually topped shortly after the stock market and fell all the way down um, pretty much to the to the start of 2009. So anyway, be careful that gold is not such a safe haven that you think about. Okay, we're going to take a quick break and uh, talk about Dave Landry's show. We'll be right back. Okay, and we're coming back to uh, West Texas, and, and there's a big trend line that goes on here that's becoming pretty important this morning, again, um, where, where OPEC couldn't agree with Russia on cuts, and so they've agreed to extend the existing cuts to the end of the year, which is whatever. Um, but I think the, the problem we have you know, some of these moves in, in crude oil have been vicious. And we still have a series of lower highs and lower lows going on. So if we were to plot that down here, would that be fair? Um, whatever, let's just draw a trend line like this and draw a trend line down here. We're going to end up in some sort of a wedge. I would just say that, that crude oil is ready to break the 20-year trend line. That's probably not something we want to see. And if we were to just get rid of some of the garbage I already put on here. Um, the bigger thing I'm worried about here is if if crude oil, which it's having trouble doing this morning, holding this $42, $45 level and 42 intraday, um, if we start to break down below here, this is a pretty major pocket. We could go all the way to 32.50, which was the month end number. Um, but obviously we got down to $25 intramonth uh, for West Texas. So this, this chart looks very um, sensitive to a bigger drop. And, and I, think, I think we should all remember that commodities were kind of the first thing telling us to be careful. Bonds were as well. And the equity markets were like, no, no problem here. And then all of a sudden, the equi equity markets lost 15%. So the early warning system was in uh, the commodities and the bonds and even the currencies. Um, it was the equities that were the final straw. So um, I'm a little uncomfortable with crude oil here, especially if they can't agree. Now, here's the U.S. dollar, and I've talked about this many times, but there's an uptrend on the U.S. dollar here, and there's a big downtrend coming off these peaks. How this resolves, I don't have an answer for. Um, I would just say that we are at one of the most sensitive um, inflection points in the dollar and so if everybody was going to run to the dollar uh, this chart's going to shoot up and obviously the euro is going to drop significantly we reach recently had a massive reversal in the yen um, trying to hold up and the british pound doesn't look like it's going to fare very well here so we're going to keep watching but the yen is trying to pop out of this let's call it pennant formation, but from the top, it looks like an upside down flag, right? And then, so we'd, we'd have another lower pole all the way down to here. Look at the dates on the yen. This is 2007, 2008. So when the stock market got in trouble, the yen took off and everything kind of broke down. Well, the Nikkei is sitting at 21,000 right now, and I think that's one of the most important levels the DAX also is at an important level so all of these things are lined up right here with this big pennant going on it looks so nice and easy at a long-term monthly chart going out uh, you know 70 years or 50 years or something but there's a big uptrend here in the yen got this little pennant pattern let's watch closely to see which way this breaks if the yen starts to soar again I think we've got bigger problems um, that we really don't uh, don't want to see um, showing up. So just be really careful here. And the Canadian dollar typically follows crude oil or moves with crude oil, and it's about to break a 20-year trend line up here. Let's just draw that. Whoops. Uh, that's okay. 
Um, went up and got the wrong box. Okay, so we're gonna pick this one. So the one thing that I would say on here is this Canadian dollar needs to hold this. Um, for anybody who's been listening, we've been having some problems getting things moved across the country lately. So this is at a particularly precocious place or precarious place. And, and the reason I say that is, again, we got this downward flag and it looks like it could just break the other way. So try and watch the Canadian dollar for clues on the, the price of crude. But it, the Canadian dollar looks like it's going to break this 20 year trend line as does crude oil. And the Euro's got this big steep downtrend and this big steep uptrend and we're right at the junction. So it couldn't be more important. Just try and draw those lines one more time. Anyway, rip that down there and rip this up here. With, with that going on, at this point, again, all of these currencies, one of my thoughts for the year was going to be this would be the year that we'd see a bunch of major currency direction changes. And we're sitting there, we're right at the apex of all of those currencies for making a decision. So the yen, the US dollar, and the euro. Okay, the bonds are the ugly one, and you can just see that this chart just took out the 1948 lows, so that's a bit of a problem for us. And uh, we're drilling down hard. This is the 30-year. The 10-year um, is down below 0.77 this morning. Uh, Three-month has just plummeted again. And I will mark that this was a recession. This was a recession. Um, so I've got some charts marking some pretty significant recessions on it. This looks really sad to me. Um, not very good. So anyway, uh, real quick, let's scroll down to the unemployment rate. We're down near the bottom of the range. Everybody knows that. If this was to start to accelerate meaningfully, that would be a problem. I want to cover off one chart specifically. This housing starts. This chart typically ends in church spires, which I was really surprised at. I thought it would be more of a rollover chart, but it doesn't really do that. Um, so anyway, watch this chart carefully. Producer price index. This is one that when you look at this... Uh, draw a line. When you look at this chart here, you know, there is an uptrend there. I get all that. Look at this. This surprises me is that the, the uh, horizontal support and resistance just seems to be holding this thing back since 2008. And so until that starts to break out, I think that's a, a pretty important component to watch for. Now, we've had some jaggedness in this indicator in 2008, 2015, 16. But if we start to break this line right now, that would break a pretty major uptrend that goes back well, all the way down here if you want. But um, that that indicator is quite um, close. Anyway, with, with that, I think the bigger thing to, to be aware of, gross domestic product, can't really use that as a place to trade from, that's for sure. Anyway, hopefully you found some uh, insightful looks on some of the charts there. Let's go see what the S&P is trying to do. It's trying to bounce off the lows here, so that's nice to see. Again, this was the um, end of February lows, February 28th. So here we are with a retest of those lows roughly two weeks later. Probably not a, well, I guess we're not two weeks later, we're a week later. Probably what we want to watch for here is just how do we handle coming down here? And if this is the lows and we start to bounce out of here, look at how our momentum indicator is making a higher low here. If this was to start to turn up, that would be, much more bullish um, and hopeful uh, than some of those charts we just saw. Let's go look at the banks. And again, I've got all of these banks uh, sitting here in one file and they have various intraday price actions. Let's just um, refresh them. But I think the, the most important thing to do here, let's just, I've got them in sort order from strongest to weakest and we're gonna scroll through them at a, record pace here, but just scroll to the bottom. We're going to number in a sorted order. So they're based on the strongest scooter rankings, not necessarily on uh, today's intraday price action. So here's MSCI. That one still looks fine. Um, China Construction Bank jogging sideways, but still trying to pop out the top here. PPO is above zero. This would be an optimistic place to get on board, actually, if it continues to move. Um, Equifax, big uh, jerk down and tried to recover last week. Keep watching that for some divergence here. you got a lower high and a higher high, so that's a little concerning. All of these um, exchanges, NASDAQ, TSX, CME, 
all of those, they, they always seem to be, they experience the pullbacks, but they do pretty well in all of this trading environment. Moody's um, still drilling at the bottom of the second bar there. HSBC, I think it's fair to say, looks like it's threatening the five-year. Keeps trying to bounce off there, so hopefully it can. There's the CME group again, um, trying to get back up above the prior highs here, but a little bit of lower momentum. Intercontinental, same thing, lower momentum, trying to get back up to prior highs. ICICI, um, trying to hold the 40-week. Doesn't look like it's going to be successful here. Big upward trend in momentum, very close to breaking. Uh, Bank of China, Beijing, that looks pretty downtrending to me. Uh, CBOE, Chicago Board, um, trying to hold this uptrend. I'd say it's broken. It's trying to hold the 40-week. You got lower highs here, higher highs here, so that's a bit of an issue. Here's BlackRock, the asset managers. Um, very close to breaking its, uh, I'll call it 14-month uptrend. So we need to see that hold and pretty much a double top on that chart. So that's a little bit scary, especially based on the long-term charts we just saw. Here's T. Rowe Price. This is breaking the uptrend. Royal Bank uh, breaking the uptrend. This is Canada's biggest bank. E-Trade Financial just grinding lower and then the sudden uh, push up and now the reversal of that. So uh, rolling over near zero, that's a bit of a problem. Jeffrey's Financial Group uh, was trading sideways, kind of broke out, has given it all back, right back to the 40-week, trying to hold an uptrended momentum here. Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce, one of Canada's top five banks, but um, at this point, you see the chart breaking lower. Bank of Nova Scotia, another Canadian bank breaking lower. State Street plummeting lower. Uh, the Italian banks, this is not good. This thing's been on a downtrend for a couple of years now. It's rolling over pretty quickly here. Who'd be surprised with the issues from the COVID virus? Here's People's Bank breaking down. Uh, Deutsche Bank, this one, a brief surge up, and now it's given it all back, back to getting close to testing that Lowe's trend line. Um, HDFC uh, pretty much rolled over earlier in the year, started in December. Um, DBS Group, don't know that one. Um, HSBC, this one's clearly on a train out of town. UBS, um, back to testing the lows already. So in two weeks from $13 to 10, that's kind of a big deal. Barclays, same issue. Um, I, I don't like the situation in uh, the London Stock Exchange chart, and I'm really not comfortable seeing the, some of these big London banks under pressure. Mitsubishi Financial, Japanese one, starting to break down through the 2019 lows or near them. Uh, Bank of Bilboa from Spain, this one's trying to break down, you know, very close to five-year lows. So all of these are starting to be under threat. So I'd keep an eye on these big banks. We wanna make sure they hold up. For some reason, we didn't get to any of the US banks, but here's BMO, Canadian bank. This thing's 80 bucks to 60, pretty quick. So all of these are, I would say, under stress. Hopefully you agree. Um, Goldman Sachs, this is uh, falling hard. I mentioned this one a couple of weeks ago. Lloyd's breaking down. Morgan Stanley, very close to this trend line. So obviously we need the lows to hold on the market broadly here. Okay, so let's go see the S&P. It's still trying to hold up uh, on a 60-minute chart. Again, we'll just see if it's got the thrust to get out of here for the rest of the day and end this downslide. If not, if it drives by those lows, um, after that transport chart broke, that's all pretty meaningful. Thanks for taking the time to join me on Market Buzz. Market Buzz airs Wednesdays and Fridays at 10.30 a.m. Eastern. You can also see the recordings on Stock Charts TV. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.